Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all already know how we do. I am HO Talk Show in the booth in the building, Max mm -hmm. Charles. I gave my government that time, Max <laughs> Charles. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, family. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. And we're going to try not to disappoint. Um, hopefully, you've been uh, feeling the love so far this show. Um, and yeah, because we are joined right now by uh, the Bridge PAI Executive Director. Brother's been here with us, I guess, going on a couple years now. Yeah. Um, and uh, none other than than Jay Simple, brother Jay. Man, how you feeling today? I'm feeling pretty good. Thank you for having me over to talk with y'all. This is great. Glad to finally have you on. I know we've been talking about it for a minute, so it feels yeah. like yeah. Today's yes, day. yes, yeah. indeed. Today is the day. It's come to fruition um, because I, I know a lot of people know uh, know about you or they've uh, seen the work um, around the city. Um, and so, like, we're just so glad to have you um, and you definitely want people who may not be familiar with your story, um, you know, including one to plug our partners over at Vinegar Hill Magazine, uh, because I think when you first came to town, you had a cover issue. You know how hard it is to get a cover issue of Vinegar Hill Magazine, man? Well, and you weren't nice. even in town. <laughs> <laughs> so that so that speaks volumes for you right there. And now I know that they're running a series right now, too, about a, uh, about a project that you're doing. And, you know, you can let us know about that as well. Um, but for those that may not be uh, familiar with you or the bridge, for that matter, because you brought a new face to the bridge PAI, you know what I mean? Like when it comes to particularly the urban community, the black and brown community and feeling represented or like seeing ourselves with, you know, within the performing arts initiative. Yeah. Right. So um, let the folks know who Jay Simple is. What brought him to Charlottesville, yeah. man? Give us the run there. Give us the background. Yeah, no. Um, so I've been in Charlottesville, what we're, we're going on two years right mm -hmm. now. And I first came into town to work at, at the bridge. But mm -hmm. uh, before I came here, you know, I've been, an artist pretty much all my life. Okay. Uh, I've always been uh, into the arts, whatever it is. So mm -hmm. I was you know, into photography, sculpture. I do performances. Um, that's sort of my background, okay. most solidly, mm -hmm. is being an artist and trying to figure out what the arts does. Mm -hmm. How does it communicate something uh, to each other, mm -hmm. right? To the world around us, mm -hmm. speak to these truths that sometimes we can't say in a certain way, but mm -hmm. art can say it in a different way. Mm -hmm. So I always mm -hmm. really love that. And where are you from? I'm from Philly. Philly. Hey. Okay. Yeah. West Philadelphia. I was raised, but I was born in Chicago. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Good stuff, man. So yeah, yeah so I, I was working as an artist most of my life, um, and then around 2020, right after uh, everything that was going on with George Floyd mm -hmm. and you know this explosion of people really calling on uh, more recognition of Black lives, mm -hmm. I started an organization uh, called the Photographer's Green Book. Okay, and it was a resource for people in the visual arts to like navigate their careers, mm -hmm. and so that kind of really got me started thinking about how you can like create an institution. Mm -hmm. that's like built to support some people who are very often neglected or underserved and like if you create an organization built to serve them mm -hmm. right you invite in so many more people that mm -hmm. you can help mm -hmm. um mm. so when i got the opportunity to come to charlottesville why, people, why don't people get mm -hmm. that i don't know it's really <laughs> is it's it really re that hard no i don't think so <laughs> right but i think i think what it does though it, mm -hmm. it requires you to shift mm -hmm who gets to make decisions, mm -hmm. what those decisions look like. Mm -hmm. and that can create conflict because uh, of, well, who has resources and power then, right? right. We, mm, yeah, say so. Somebody's gotta switch out. Mm -hmm. And so that's scary for mm -hmm. a lot of folks mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. So we see that a lot happening right now in the arts mm -hmm. and other things of uh, a lot of a lot of desire for change, mm -hmm. right? With that idea. But then once folks are actually in these institutions, mm -hmm. we see, uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of pushback for yeah. what they try to bring. Yeah, right, right. Now, now I heard you mention Philadelphia and Chicago. So, so out of that work that you mentioned, and maybe you want to mention some others. Um, what work did you do in Philly and in Chi Town? Um, because that's a big difference between those places and Charlottesville. Yeah. You know, so so I'm curious, like the work you did there, you know, and then what inspired you to want to come to Charlottesville? Yeah. Well, um, so I went to uh, undergrad in uh, at Columbia College Chicago. Mm -hmm. I got my uh, BFA in photography out there. And then, well, Philly's home, so everything I do, mm. I feel like, is kind of based out of Philly in mm -hmm. one way or another. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. I went to I went to school out there. I have a master's in liberal arts from UPenn, um, okay, and then I have a MFA and master's in fine arts from the Rhode Island uh, School. Dang, what's that place? RISD, Rhode Island School of Design. I swear, okay. I graduated from. <laughs> um, and so after that, I um, 
I moved to uh, Farmville, Virginia. Okay. And I was teaching out at Longwood for three years. Mm -hmm. uh, then moved gotcha. back to Philly, and then I just came back here. So gotcha. I was in Philly for about a year, but I had been out in uh, Farmville for like three. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, a lot of my work and uh, like my own personal like photography and sort of conceptual work or whatnot, mm -hmm. is a lot about Virginia because this is yeah. like the landing place of black people. And mm -hmm. like, yeah. It becomes a really interesting touch point throughout history mm -hmm. for these like monumental moments around who we are, mm -hmm. what we can be. And so I find that really, really fascinating. Mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. see a lot of that happening right here mm -hmm. in Charlottesville. So mm -hmm. I'm like excited to be here. It's a big difference from Philly. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think that- yeah, uh, but Farmville was a good buffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> no, right? It's like right in between. I was like Philly, Farmville, Charlottesville's right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. So, um, so the bridge, P-A-I, you know, like, like I said, um, it seems to have been sort of refaced a little bit because I can tell you, the work that you've done so far, I applaud you because, you know, the bridge name is showing up in places that honestly, you know, uh, preceding you, I don't recall it showing up before. So I feel like now you've opened up the arts to new to a new demographic. Um, so was that the main goal or like what was the inspiration behind wanting to take this uh, work on at the bridge? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, like I, I came with uh, maybe a different uh, perspective, just an overall and like how to like run an organization that's in the arts, right? So I had a lot of stuff that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I still got a lot of stuff I want to do. Mm -hmm. But I kind of came in and didn't really forefront that. Um, so I was lucky enough when I got hired, we had done like all the strategic planning. Mm -hmm. They had gone out and interviewed, you know, community members, mm -hmm. folks that were interested in the arts, our funders, everybody. And they were basically saying, you know, we really want uh, more resources. We mm -hmm. want uh, our community to be more interconnected. Mm -hmm. And we want uh, some yeah, free resources, studio space, equipment, mm -hmm. all those things. Mm -hmm. And so I centered the entire thing that we would do off of that. So That's we started awesome. off as a small gallery. Um, and I think within three or four months when I came, we closed. Mm -hmm. And it was scary because mm -hmm. I just got the job. Mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah, we're going to close the thing that we've been here for 18 years, yeah. right? <laughs> um, but I think what was great about it was that uh, at the core of that vision was to make something that wasn't here, mm -hmm. right? That was accessible to new communities. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's just been really my goal ever since. So mm -hmm. we opened up our new space. Uh, so on the downtown mall, right off of third and water. Yeah, and yeah. Um, it's basically a free resource center, right? The center mm -hmm. for creative collaboration, the underground. Mm -hmm. And you can come in there, you get free studio space, equipment from 4k cameras, pencils, you got mm -hmm. notebooks, mm -hmm. like you got so much stuff there. Mm -hmm. um, we got like an incredible team there that works with us mm -hmm. to awesome. like facilitate everything and yeah it's just it's been a really good vibe yeah no, no hold on now so you kind of glossed over that so so you, you have to break that last part down when it comes to those resources and whatnot like what does that look like is it is it like a rental system for the, those items or you just use them when you're on site what is yeah so it's just that? you can use them when you're on site so you okay. like come okay. in and if you want to have a photo shoot you can come you can use all the gotcha. backdrops and everything okay. uh we got like you know drills saws like a full kind of like wood shop situation going yeah, yeah. on and then other just like really small specialty things like um you know we got a cricket machine if you want to make like your own like clothing designs mm -hmm. we got like heat presses we have a whole uh you know fabric library we got mm -hmm. like four sewing machines back okay. there okay i mean a lot of a lot of equipment that you can come in yeah. and just sort of like really get your your feet wet right mm -hmm. and the idea was we hope that people come in and they don't stay mm -hmm. right we mm -hmm. want you to come we want you to like build and incubate yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we want to be a launching point for other people mm -hmm. and so that's why for us collaboration talking meeting people is really important because when we get artists in mm -hmm. we're always like oh mm -hmm. i know this person who like who needs a graphic design or mm -hmm. oh i know this person right and then we can start connecting our artists to different avenues so mm -hmm. that they can grow right to wherever they want to go do you have any programs for younger people young kids uh yeah so we have uh, a couple of things. So we've been running some like summer programming. Okay. We're about to uh, roll out in, what is that? The spring, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of free uh, youth education. So seventh and up. Okay. Uh, one of them is going to be taught by uh, Jay Johnson and it's mm -hmm. like a digital art class. Okay. And um, the other one by Sarad over at Vinegar Hill. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be uh, teaching merchandising. Okay. Um, and sort of uh, marketing and clothing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's going to be exciting awesome. to be able to see mm -hmm. that come out. But I think that's, you know, 
that's for us one of the the key sort of aspects of a lot of things mm-hmm. is to try to uh, hit a younger demographic mm-hmm. to get exposed to the arts earlier uh, to be able mm-hmm. to right one is just fun and yeah. therapeutic but yeah. also like if you start creating these systems right you can basically like be a teenager mm-hmm. you could have a a space mm-hmm. your own studio space right. for as long as like I was struggling mm-hmm. <laughs> as an adult to be able to find one, mm-hmm. right? So That's what does that do, you know, four or five years from now? Yeah. Hey, See, Max, I have an eight-year-old that loves you. to draw. And I was hoping that age number came down a little bit more. He loves to draw. And, and mm-hmm. honestly, I'm not sure which which spaces would be ideal for him. Yep. We're looking into that. So, And it'd be great to get him around people that or a diverse group of people. Yep. Yeah, no, 100 percent. I mean, I get one thing that's cool is you can just come by anytime. Mm-hmm. Like we're mm-hmm. always there mm-hmm. and we like you come in like, yo, I need an activity. And there's right. so much stuff that we can like show you. Okay. We have color and books. We got all the stuff kind of okay. little kids corner set up. Okay. But I think uh, this is just for us a, like a starting point. Right. Okay. And so we were like, OK, what 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 age group would be the highest impact for us right now? And so okay. we were thinking about right that kind of like entering into the teenage mm-hmm. years, mm-hmm. right, and being able to give them something that they can come to okay. on a like, consistent basis. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Charles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, it, like, like on that point, though, um, like how does that support come in for that? Because it, 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 I, if I'm reading between the lines, I hear you kind of saying, you know, this is a starting point. Yeah. Like, so you, so there's a vision and there's goals for growth. Um, maybe share some of those goals, but also like what does the support model look like as far as like how – I'm like, how do you get funded? Yeah. And also as far as folks who may want to volunteer, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, so that, 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 if you look at the overarching support model, what, mm-hmm. what, what does that look like? Um, well, I'd say there's a couple of different ways that we're, we're supported. One, um, I got a great team. So, uh, I work with, uh, my COO, Amber Smith, uh, who's, uh, Charlottesville native, mm-hmm. uh, does a lot of like work in mentoring and, and education and mm-hmm. just like keeps us organized and, and together. Mm-hmm. Um, and along with her is uh, my board. And our board is like filled with entrepreneurs mm-hmm. uh, that are like really helpful for us to be able to get support. So for example, I'm constantly talking about free supplies. You can come in and get free supplies, mm-hmm. but we're able to do that because uh, Sarah Sweet, who runs Scrappy Elephant, which is a yeah. uh, reuse art supply where she gets donated supplies Mm -hmm. so she's able to help us be able to facilitate getting a lot of free supplies right and Mm -hmm. so it Mm -hmm. reduces um our cost for a lot of things that we're we're doing Mm -hmm. um but then outside of that it's uh we got donor members so members can come and donate as low as like five dollars a month and that really helps us uh kind of do like monthly overhead and then the rest of it we have some really good funders um so one is the the Janan Foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, they've been uh, really, really key in funding the opening of uh, the underground. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, uh, CACF, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. state, local, mm-hmm. all those type of things. We're kind of fundraising and granting that way. And there's a couple other private donors. Yeah. You know, Charlottesville is the, the, yeah, the mecca is. of <laughs> nonprofit, the nonprofit right, right <laughs> below uh, D.C. So I think there's a lot of. A lot of opportunity for support mm-hmm. um and i think that we're kind of angling ourselves a little bit differently by uh answering a demand that was there and so mm-hmm. i think we're seeing a lot of people who want to come and okay. help mm-hmm. support okay. max I, I don't know if you realize this but that board is if I'm not, and correct me if i'm wrong but it's majority women of color yep. okay yeah. So now was that purposeful Go i gotta us. ask that's right that's <laughs> right us. black girl magic yeah. <laughs> right what do they say behind every black man is a good, uh, strong hey, black woman? So say it again <laughs> for the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's really important. I think, yeah. again, like when we're talking about how do you build a different institution, mm-hmm. right? I think um, that is something that's really important. I think it's noticed when you walk in the room. Mm-hmm. I notice it in the way that I have to operate and mm-hmm. move and like how I'm held accountable for things. Right. So I think it's uh, it's it's really key for us to constantly look at institutions and organizations often they'll bring in someone who looks just like me Mm -hmm. and the entire board will look somewhat Mm -hmm. totally different Mm -hmm. so for Mm -hmm. us it was important that this kind of reflection is seen in all aspects of Mm -hmm. like decision making and you know agenda setting throughout the organization 
Yeah. And besides that, Max, I know you pretty well too. I bet you, I know something that's that's, that's on your mind. Right. Because when you talk about Jay, you've been here a couple of years. Does that mean that you came in when Charlottesville um, started experiencing a record number of of, of crime, like a, a record amount of crime, and particularly gun violence? Um, and you've been you've lived in some pretty major cities. Um, so I got to imagine that, that there's a tie, maybe to some some things that 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 you witness or experience coming up to how the arts plays a role in a young black man's life mm -hmm. and the importance of that. So can you touch or on woman. that? Or, yeah, woman, yeah. or a woman or a woman. Yeah. Like, so can you touch on and, you know, and really like share, share with our listeners, you know, because we have a lot of young black families, young black people, and you know, our demographics are more than that. But in particularly when we look at what's plaguing our communities right now, how important things like the arts are. I know it's a philosophical question. Uh, well, you no, I, I mean, um, I'm an artist, so I want to yeah. be like, art solves it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Or like, art with okay, the Okay, so that... then how? Because that's the second time that I've heard that, what? that art solves it all when it comes to, like, social ills. Oh, yeah, no, I say I want to say that, <laughs> right? Because it would feel good, because I'm like, yeah, like, Bye -bye. I dedicated my life to being an artist. So uh -huh. it's like, right? But uh, the, the, the reality is that, like, it can... Um, when I was in, uh, I, I was in Rhode Island in what, 2017, I got mm -hmm. a chance to meet uh, Emory Douglas, and mm -hmm. he was the person who did all of like, the propaganda and drawing for the Black Panthers, mm -hmm. right? Ah, okay. Okay. And so I was asking him, I was asking him, like, what's the difference between art right now and art when you were doing art? Like, mm -hmm. like what are we doing that you weren't doing? Or what were, you know, what's, what it is? Mm -hmm. And he was like, uh, now you can, you're making art with no uh, movement behind it we had a, a concrete movement and that's what mm. allowed my artwork to do something. He was like, I'm good at what I do, but it became mm. so much more because it was built behind mm -hmm. a message and a thing and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what the power of art can be. It can mm -hmm. display a message. It can tell you something, but like it to be activated to the point of change mm -hmm. it needs actual actions behind it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Of people doing mm -hmm. things in other avenues, right. That use that art as mm -hmm. a, you know, um, as a rallying point mm -hmm, for yeah. how they feel or see or think about something. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think that in that way, it can communicate, it can inspire, and that's important, right? It's just like important to be able to see yourself in the media, the news, right? Drawings, paintings, right? You go to a gallery, if you see it's all white, you kind of begin to think that like yeah. somehow or another, you're culturally like not there, mm -hmm. right? But if you see yourself there, it's important mm -hmm. for like who you are, right? So in that sense, I think that art is mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. But when I look at, and we're talking specifically about violence, right? Mm -hmm. If I look at that in the places that I've lived uh, and here in Charlottesville, right? I think then you begin to see a lot of other things that are underlining that begin to happen with, uh, you know, a disproportionate amount of us being, uh, resources being taken away, specifically like land, mm -hmm. and how that operates in creating generational wealth, right? And all these other things that contribute to violence, where it's like violence itself is like uh, a symptom of yeah, a lot of yeah. other issues mm -hmm. yep. that need to be solved. But like those other ones are deeply ingrained mm -hmm. in our social fabric, not just Charlottesville, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, absolutely. I, I like that. You look mm -hmm. like you want to say something, Max. Well, I'm looking like, why? Uh -huh. Yeah, because like you're scared to give the answer. Scared to give what? Well, just hesitant to say what the truth is. Oh no. Okay. No, I think. Um, I'm See? A, no, no, no. What? No, what this, is this it? Is just, no, this is just how I. Like okay. It. I, this is just my mannerism. Okay. But I also like to be very, very clear, right? Okay. Because again, I think I'm in, I'm in a position within my field where I'm like. I'm very often the first person to come someplace, okay. mm -hmm. and everyone's always waiting for me to be like, "Bull Huey Newton on them," mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And so, like, <laughs> I, I feel that mm -hmm. I got mm -hmm. that energy, mm -hmm. right? But um, I'm also in a position that I'm serving Absolutely. a lot of other people that are outside okay. of me, so I go Huey on my own time, okay? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I'm, okay. I'm here to talk about this message, I got this thing that Makes we're sense. doing, but I ain't going to like. I ain't going to water down what I'm okay. saying, but I want to be sure that I'm representing what I'm saying in, a, in, in the way that I want to be. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Down. makes sense. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, we are joined by Jay Simple, uh, executive director. Is that the official title mm -hmm. of the bridge? P-A-I. Um, you know, so, something that, that, that you made me think um, as, as you were talking, um, as well as like when we think about music, right? Like that art form of particularly hip hop music, rap music. 
and how some people say, well, it's just art. It's like, just like you. So, so when, so when you look at sort of social ills and whatnot, then people, some people want to point to the music our kids listen to, you know what I mean? Like, like that's one generational thing that we hear every generation, mm -hmm. but then you have the people who say, but it's like, but it's art is some people say art imitates life. Right. So there's this whole debate going. I don't know if you saw, but actually on on Sway in the Morning, um, D1, the, the New Orleans Christian rapper talking about like the new uh, Meek Mill and, and Rick Ross album. And he was like, but Meek, like you talking about criminal justice reform and you, you know, do all this great stuff in the community. But then you're talking about shooting your ops and all this stuff on the record. You know what I mean? So then it sort of brought back to light this debate of like, do we tell movies that you no longer can have violence in movies? Or is that art somehow different when it's black people telling the art? Because I even think about like someone like a Tyler Perry mm -hmm. and how Spike Lee was like, that doesn't represent black people right. And some people are like, dude, it's entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's the way he's portraying his art form. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm getting philosophical on you. But when you think about art and it reflecting life and the role that it plays, mm -hmm. like what's your take on that, on, on, on drawing that contrast between art and life? Yeah. Um. I don't know, I think I guess I think about it in two ways. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one part of it for me when I look at it is um, is what stories get to be told and popularized through art. So if you look at like music, I don't think for me, at least when I look at it, it's not mm -hmm. that there's a problem with like uh, right, you're talking about Meek. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm from Philly, so I can't say anything. <laughs> you know, what I mean, they, like, I won't be able to go back home. Right? Yeah, no, you gotta no, check no. in. Yeah, right. Gotta check in. Right. <laughs> but like, right, they're talking about like, right? Is it is it wrong that he's doing that or making that music? But you're right, it's part of his story, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I think there's also an industry which uh, is more willing to accept that narrative of what blackness looks like and they profit off of that whereas the other narratives and stories are not propagated the same way mm -hmm. so there's this constant idea that we're you know somehow or another criminalized which again trickles down to all these other things that society tries to put on people and so i think that the story itself is not the issue but mm -hmm. what the vastness of you know our narrative gets to be told on that level of a platform and so mm -hmm. i think that then people come and they critique it because they're like hey listen we know this is a thing but like we don't even got that many spots here so can you tell yeah. a different story mm -hmm. which is kind of weird because then we're like yo listen i need you to tell a story that's not yours right mm -hmm. and so it's like and so i think people you know they try to do that and you see that in the complexities of someone who's right rapping about violence mm -hmm. and thinking about criminal mm -hmm. uh, justice reform. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, mm -hmm. both things can live, dualities live simultaneously in people. So I think that's a thing, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good answer, good answer. Yeah, um, but yeah, so we are joined by Jay Simple of The Bridge, uh, PAI. So the goals, man, the goals, you know, I guess, um, you know, kind of kind of winding up the interview, but def definitely feel free to chime in anything, you know, people who may be their first time um, being introduced to you or whatnot, anything that you want them to know, you know, about your work here in Charlottesville, so please chime in. But I'm, but I'm curious about going, you know, going forward, maybe some of the uh, events that you all already have going on or some of the things that you have planned that you want folks yeah. to know about. Yeah, no, I think, um, right. I think one of the things that we did was we opened up a free art space. That was like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's major. That, that's major. I mean, <laughs> can't really go to, many places like there's ain't no place like mm -hmm. this i know of in philly mm -hmm. and i've never seen it in my whole career otherwise mm -hmm. i would probably be somewhere else uh, right yeah. now i'd mm -hmm. be making work in that studio yeah, tell right the truth. Yeah. um <laughs> so i think that's that keeping that space right and making it sustainable is one thing um but again i think like looking at all these things i think we when you open a free space you're like cool it's mm -hmm. free mm -hmm. with that becomes a whole lot of other things free ain't necessarily free mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. i can be an artist and want to come make work in the studio and this is a long way to answer your question you, you know right i, I might want to come in the studio make my work all the time but uh if i'm an adult i probably got to work mm -hmm. 40 hour a week that gives me two days right usually mm -hmm. an entire week that i can make work one of those i'm gonna nap i don't know about y'all <laughs> but i'd be sleepy after work so one of them sleeping right one of them uh -huh. is gonna go try to like meal prep maybe a mm -hmm. day or two mm -hmm. so i probably got like six or seven hours that I can go like try and be creative. That's a really hard space mm -hmm. to really kind of get into your creative practice, right? It's just like anything you have to be in there mm -hmm. doing it consistently. Um, so that's why very often those people who are artists are folks that have the capital and the wealth to be supported so mm -hmm. that they can, we can go into our studios and mm -hmm. play around and stuff, mm -hmm. right? 
So uh, we're looking to begin building uh, fellowships and internships that are paid. Okay. Um, and we're really looking. So if you're out there funders, uh, mm -hmm. we're looking for mm -hmm. folks who would be willing to uh, fund mm -hmm. interns and fellows that get paid a part-time salary. So okay. that at least we could be like, hey, you can come, you can work here. We give you a studio, equipment, supplies, and a part-time salary mm -hmm. to work on your creative endeavors in the space. And mm -hmm. so I think that's that's us trying to like sort of start tackling other things that mm -hmm. we're seeing. So I think we're looking at that, uh, you know, launching more education programs and, mm -hmm. you know, coupling those with food programs. Like uh, mm -hmm. what happens if you come in here, right? Artists mm -hmm. talk about a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of emotional things. Like, uh, so what happens if you have like uh, someone who can do some therapy sessions, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. In the space with our artists. Mm -hmm. So really thinking about the arts, but then all the things that are around it that our community could use to support themselves, right? And then hopefully go off and do some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, we get to look back and be like, yeah, mm -hmm. that was cool. I remember mm -hmm. when that was like, just starting to butt up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's good stuff, that's an awesome conversation. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking, I, I do have a question. I've been playing with whether or not a stupid question, but I'm just going to throw it out there for you. Um, you know, what as an artist, where would you say the lines merge or, or kind of, or, or blur when it comes to art being art, whether we're talking about art that's created by mm -hmm. a, a white person or art that's created by a black person. Mm -hmm. um, Can I throw in a third? Yep. AI. Like uh, the artificial mm -hmm. art that we have nowadays. I would mm -hmm. throw that third one in that question. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. what, what, so, what, what, like, what makes the difference? If there is one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and the value, mm -hmm. right? Or like who controls the value, mm -hmm. you know? That's, I mean, like, I think there's a little, yeah. Is there a difference? No. Right, I mean, like, okay, like, big umbrella, I'd be like, no, because, mm -hmm. like, right, black and white are, like, constructs, right? So mm -hmm. they're just people mm -hmm. making stuff. But mm -hmm. there is a difference mm -hmm. between, like, the things that you reference mm -hmm. and you talk about, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, white artists ain't going to make work about, like, the texture of the the curls of their hair it'd be mm -hmm. weird you'd be like oh what is it like right you'd be like this is a little strange right like so there's certain things that we mm -hmm. talk about in our work and mm -hmm. like i think what makes it black art or white art is that we make work about our lives yeah, about our lives. context right mm -hmm. and so me and you have different right intersecting points that like we can look at something and be like i know that i, mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about mm -hmm. there and that's really what makes it uh a lot different i think for me Mm -hmm. um with ai art though yeah. I'm, I'm really into it okay. um okay I, i'm into it because like uh i think it's it's i think ai art is a little bit closer to what we think of as white art and that's hmm. mostly from what i understand i don't know a lot of everything but like ai can only generate what you put into it right, right? right. and so like it algorithmically like is mm -hmm. inputted with the cultural norms of our country mm -hmm. and so i think it's really interesting to ask it to produce things mm -hmm. because yeah. it's like all right this is what y'all be thinking about mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which could be good or bad <laughs> right i mean i i like i i worked on this this thing right when it first came on uh um, chat gpt first came out yeah i would always go on i would ask it um what is the race of its makers mm -hmm. right and when mm -hmm. i first did it I like I, mm. I I literally have to record it, so it's the creepiest thing. I first did it, and it told me it was like, uh, you know, this person's uh, South African, this person's that, uh, this person, this person, and I'd go back and ask like the same questions again, mm -hmm. and it eventually told me it couldn't uh, tell me anymore that it was like, it doesn't see race or something like that. Mm. And so it's like mm. interesting that like, mm -hmm. I think AI is like interesting just because it's like also sort of adaptive, and yeah. like strange mm -hmm. and like that whole kind of little space i think is interesting yeah now now what about the value and max this is an awesome question because it, i'm glad you reminded you know brought mm -hmm. this question up because it reminded mm -hmm. me some things that we needed to ask the but like what about the value and like ownership because i hear some people say art in general mm -hmm. should be like like in the public domain yeah. and n technically free yeah. and then when you bring in the ai piece of it then folks say, well, then then that like has another layer to who owns this yeah. or like the authenticity of being able to try to copyright that. Yeah. Like, so how like, how would you approach that? Like when it comes and it's kind of, sort of a two part question yeah. of like art mm -hmm. 
should art be public domain or should there be copyright and ownership and 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 like like should it be a revenue like generated a gen, revenue generating module at its heart yeah you know is that authentic art you know yeah i don't know. i don't i don't really uh i'm gonna contradict myself because i mm -hmm. like i sell work so mm -hmm. like <laughs> and like it's how i make my living so like yeah yeah you hear this yeah. like don't stop <laughs> but um i think i think the whole like market for art is like weird mm -hmm. and like it doesn't really make a lot of sense and i start like looking back at like other cultural norms around art right like art as we know it right now where you know you go get the gallery you do mm -hmm. you know just anybody i can just up and be like mm, today i'm gonna be mm -hmm. this thing it wasn't how it always was mm -hmm. like there was other cultures like i think about uh going uh like um being in like uh nigeria i mm -hmm. went to Nigeria a couple of years ago and I was in Benin where they made like the statues that, mm -hmm. that are trying to get repatriated now. Mm -hmm. um, but you just couldn't make no statue. Mm -hmm. Like you mm -hmm. had to be a trained artisan, mm -hmm. right? And like you making that statue was associated with a whole ethos of, of life, mm -hmm. right? Of mm -hmm. like, right, both religious, both like, uh, right, communal, right? Both like institutional, mm -hmm. all those things were what that art was mm -hmm. when you make the art just about dollars it kind of loses all that spirit and energy that we put into it right you make this piece and it's about love and mm -hmm. and about about struggle and then you'd be like all right now five g's for it yeah. it's like yeah. ah, like like mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. is yeah. it worth that value a hundred percent but like that in and of itself that whole capitalism and all that kind of stuff i think really sucks a lot of creativity out because then what you start doing is like making stuff to mm -hmm. make the money and then mm -hmm. you start like not really saying right mm -hmm. what you want to say mm -hmm. and you have to play these games and it's kind of like yeah if you take that out you just you mm -hmm. get to say whatever you want but mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah man i, I appreciate you yeah, see, you, you probably thought this was going to be I like some, bring little, up some the statue little, melting some and remolding basic. and molding that. No, bring it up. Go art. ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm not trying to get you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> in trouble. Yeah, but you know, I've I've read things, probably talked to people. Um, not by joy, choice. Part of what I do is so that's just stupid. That's yeah. not art. What do you mean? There's already art when the statue was what it was, and you want to melt it and and, mm. and make it into something else that supposedly mm. embodies a a, a group or community or a, a city. <laughs> yeah, that's deep. That's deep. I think, I think the whole conversation <laughs> around public art, mm -hmm. what I'm, I, what I'm fascinated mm -hmm. about, um, is how often we certain people will really try to um create spaces mm -hmm. for us that are uh i want to say this properly i was driving uh once i was driving down i was driving some highway i mm -hmm. had to be towards lynchburg okay right mm -hmm. and i was driving past this station or the stop and it was called uh lynch lynching lynch station mm -hmm. and i took a picture of yeah. it and I was yeah. like, man, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, yep. why would you have this thing being called Lynch Station? Like, mm -hmm. it, in my mind, it takes me somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. right. You could easily just change that name, and and I would feel safe in that space. It'd be like, hey, like, mm. look, that thing just makes me feel really unsafe because of these things, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, why can't we just remove the things mm -hmm. that make us feel unsafe so that we can have spaces that we are all welcomed in, mm -hmm. right? And so it's interesting to see moments where folks don't want other people to feel safe or hear their perspective or hear their side of it, mm -hmm. right? So like, I think it's it's uh, it's where we're at right now, mm -hmm. right? Because I think we know a lot about the ways that our cities are built, are organized, mm -hmm. and uh, tell a history that, um, again, negates other people's history mm -hmm. and narratives and stories yeah, yeah, yeah. right so i mean i can go back and forth <laughs> with you on melted don't melt it right 
I think it's art either which way. So you're you're engaging with the conversation. Mm. I don't like I'm not one of thinking that like it's melted down, so now it's gone mm -hmm. because like the melting of it is like part of the story of where it got to. And like mm -hmm. yeah. so it's not like all of a sudden like all of those ideas just evaporate mm -hmm. out. Like mm -hmm. it's just a statue that's gone, guys. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. it's gonna be made into something else. Mm -hmm. And that'll be a part of the narrative and the story. So mm -hmm. I'm like interested in how we <laughs> how we do that part. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, but it yeah, seems yeah. we're very often latching on to trying to hold on to the past of what the South maybe once was, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. maybe doesn't need to ever be again, mm -hmm. and yeah. probably never will be, mm -hmm. right? And so I think this transformation mm -hmm. gives us a point of creating a new monument. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm just always been mm -hmm. weary of all monuments. And I'm saying, okay, if we're going to create a monument, then like, what does that monument become, mm -hmm. right? Like, what is it that we're going to create in this moment mm -hmm. that will always be the thing we need to be there. You should submit an idea to yeah. the Heritage Center of what it should become. Yeah. But I think always, like eventually it won't it won't be mm -hmm. like useful. Mm -hmm. Like whatever monument, like that's how I think about just monuments in general, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. build a monument and then like 70 years later, 100, 200, like will that monument be the right. statement that thing needs? Yeah. Right? So. Like maybe it should just be melted down constantly. Maybe it's just like a cycle, mm. it never ends. Mm -hmm. Right? That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and the bridge could also create an AI um, engine as well. You know what I mean? Like a diverse engine. <laughs> listen, we're gonna make monuments. We make an AI. Listen, 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 <laughs> Don't you worry about the bow. Don't, Don't you worry about, about the bow. Listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But 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 man, but I I got to say this. You know, as we come to a close too, though. Like in a way, history is art, and I'm and I'm gonna say something that's very unpopular, mm -hmm. but we have an issue compartmentalizing history because I agree when it comes to you don't want an edifice that seems to be edifying white supremacy and things of that sort. Totally agree with that, but we also need to compartmentalize that history happened, and just like we don't want anybody to erase our stories and our history, you know, just, just like we don't want to start at slavery. You know what I mean? There's, there's history that we got to make sure that we're not trying to erase just because it's traumatic, just because it's hard to listen to or hard to, you know, like to visualize by it being a statue or whatnot. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, like we got to compartmentalize without edifying. And I get the point where some people even said, well, then statues should be kept in a historic context, which mm -hmm. I agree with that as well. Like whether mm -hmm. you put them in a museum or mm -hmm. making sure that it's not something that's like a beacon of your town and your city that's mm -hmm. sitting on the highest plateau. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I bring that up though, because it's still just like you wouldn't want anybody to judge your art. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a tough conversation, but mm -hmm. it it's like, it is what it is mm -hmm. and you can't erase what it was because, mm -hmm. because if you f don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like like that old adage. Mm -hmm. So I just think that we ride that fine line and, and, and it, it, it makes me think of art, right? It's like, I may not agree with your art. Something about your art may may rub, rub me wrong and whatever that creation may be, mm -hmm. whatever that art form may be, it may rub me wrong, but that's your truth. And we just got to make sure that we're not erasing truth because the truth hurts. Yeah. 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 It so. seems like we've been using a lot of that constantly. Yeah. yeah. Yes, indeed. That's all I got, Miss Max. You want to take mm -hmm. us home? I think it's good. <laughs> all, all hearts and minds clear. No, if you do, you have you know any anything that you want to mention before we end the interview? No, I just say um, yeah. If you want to come check us out, mm -hmm. we're at three hundred six East Main Street. Come by, hang out. We got Wi Fi. We got computers. We got all the things that you mm -hmm. may need. So come okay. say hello. We're real. Sounds like a great space. Can't wait to get by. So yes, yeah. Thanks for joining us today. We you want Jay to leave here with the job. We ain't going to be yeah, too long. Uh, let's see. <laughs> we're going to see that's tomorrow. Early. <laughs> we'll see tomorrow. You good? You good? We appreciate it. it you know, it, it like, but but I think again, in a position like yourself, mm -hmm. like people need authenticity, and I think they appreciate that. You know, because it's because you know, like within the realms of of, of of respect, you know. Right. So I feel like this this conversation was was respectful, but it was at the same time abstract. Mm -hmm. eye-opening you know mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. it was good yeah you, you enjoy yourself today oh uh, yeah i did good yeah, yeah. yeah. Ho hopefully you come back yeah we talk more after the <laughs> once right. it starts rolling then we'd be like yeah, all right, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs>